my life I've wondered about life beyond the Earth. On those countless other planets that we think circle other suns, is there also life? Might the beings of other worlds resemble us? Or would they be astonishingly different? What would they be made of? In the vast Milky Way galaxy, how common is what we call life? The nature of life on Earth and the quest for life elsewhere are the two sides of the same question, the search for who we are. All living things on Earth are made of organic molecules, a complex microscopic architecture built around atoms of carbon. In the great dark between the stars, there also are organic molecules in immense clouds of gas and dust. And inside such clouds, there are batches of new worlds just forming. Their surfaces are very likely covered with organic molecules. These molecules almost certainly are not made by life, although they are the stuff of life. On suitable worlds, they may lead to life. Organic matter is abundant throughout the cosmos, produced by the same chemistry everywhere. Perhaps, given enough time, the origin and evolution of life is inevitable on every clement world. There will surely be some planets too hostile for life. On others, it may arise and die out or never evolve beyond its simplest forms. And on some small fraction of worlds, there may develop intelligences and civilizations more advanced than ours. All life on our planet is closely related. We have a common organic chemistry and a common evolutionary heritage. And so our biologists are profoundly limited. They study a single biology, one lonely theme in the music of life. Is it the only voice for thousands of light years? Or is there a cosmic fugue, a billion different voices playing the life music of the galaxy? Black clouds, light years across, drift between the stars. They're filled with organic molecules. The building blocks of life are everywhere. They're easily made. On how many worlds have such complex molecules assembled themselves into patterns we would call alive? Some stars are flimsy as a soap bubble. Others are a hundred trillion times denser than lead. The hottest stars are destined to die young, but red giants are mostly elderly. Such stars are unlikely to have inhabited planets. But yellow dwarf stars, like the sun, are middle-aged and they are far more common. These stars may have planetary systems, and on such planets, for the first time in our cosmic voyage, we encounter rare forms of matter, ice and rock, air and liquid water. Close to this yellow star is a small, warm, cloudy world with continents and oceans. These conditions permit an even more precious form of matter to arise, life. But this is not the Earth. Intelligent beings have evolved and reworked this planetary surface in a massive engineering enterprise. In the Milky Way galaxy, there may be many worlds on which matter has grown to consciousness. I wonder, are they very different from us? What do they look like? What are their politics, technology, music, religion? Or do they have patterns of culture we can't begin to imagine? Are they also a danger to themselves? The molecules of life fill 
the cosmos. Now, what would life elsewhere look like? Even if it had an identical molecular chemistry to life on Earth, which I very much doubt, it could not be similar, very similar, in form to familiar organisms on the Earth. The random character of the evolutionary process must create elsewhere creatures very different from any that we know. Think of a world something like Jupiter, with an atmosphere rich in hydrogen, helium, methane, water, and ammonia, in which organic molecules might be falling from the skies like manna from heaven, like the products of the Miller-Urey experiment. Could there be life on such a world? Well, there's a special problem. The atmosphere is turbulent, and down deep, before we ever come to a surface, it's very hot. If you're not careful, you'll be carried down and fried. So one way to make a living is to reproduce before you're fried. Turbulence will carry some of your offspring to the higher and cooler layers. Such organisms could be very little. We call them sinkers. The physicist E.E. E. Saul Peter and I at Cornell have calculated something about the other kinds of life that might exist on such a world. Vast living balloons could stay buoyant by pumping heavy gases from their interiors or by keeping their insides warm. They might eat the organic molecules in the air or make their own with sunlight. We call these creatures floaters. We imagine floaters kilometers across, enormously larger than the greatest whale that ever was, beings the size of cities. We conceive of them arrayed in great lazy herds as far as the eye can see, concentrated in the updrafts in the enormous sea of clouds. But there can be other creatures in this alien environment, hunters. Hunters are fast and maneuverable. They eat the floaters, both for their organic molecules and for their store of pure hydrogen. But there can't be many hunters, because if they destroy all the floaters, they themselves will perish. Physics and chemistry permit such life forms. Art presents them with a certain reality. But nature is not obliged to follow our speculations. However, if there are billions of inhabited worlds in the Milky Way galaxy, then I think it's likely that there are a few places which might have hunters and floaters and sinkers. Biology is more like history than it is like physics. You have to know the past to understand the present. There's no predictive theory of biology, just as there's no predictive theory of history. The reason is the same. Both subjects are still too complicated for us. But we can understand ourselves much better by understanding other cases. The study of a single instance of extraterrestrial life no matter how humble a, a microbe would be just fine, will deprovincialize biology. It will show us what else is possible. Our travels allow us to see the Earth anew, as if we came from somewhere else. There are a hundred billion galaxies and a billion trillion stars. Why should this modest planet be the only inhabited world. To me, it seems far more likely that the cosmos is brimming over with life and intelligence. But so far, every living thing, every conscious being, every civilization we know anything about, lived there on Earth.